Good evening. First, I want to begin by saying Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers out there. Uh, we are so thankful for all that you do for your families, especially for your children, um, and that uh, you are raising them to love God like you love God. And uh, we're honored to be able to honor you today as we uh, worship God as well. And, and so we hope that you've had a blessed day and you've been able to enjoy uh, Mother's Day, this special holiday that's meant for you. And uh, we just want to say thank you for everything that you do. Uh, and as we're getting into tonight's lesson, I want to ask you to open to a passage that was read this morning by Brother Chuck. Uh, we're just going to start there in just a moment. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. As Chuck talked this morning about all of the different mothers that you see in the Old Testament leading into the New Testament, um, and, and kind of talked about what they did for their families and, and how they are godly mothers. And he read Proverbs 31, a powerful passage about a godly woman. And as you look at all the things that we discussed this morning and putting it together, I, I thought as we reflect on these amazing women that love their families and, and love their children, I thought maybe tonight what we could talk about is a mother's faith. We looked at specific mothers this morning, uh, and tonight I just want to look at one uh, well, I guess technically two mothers, uh, but it's in the same passage uh, in for, in uh, Second Timothy, which we'll get to in a little uh, in just a little bit. But I want us to focus on a mother's faith and the idea of how a mother transfers that faith to her children, and what should that faith look like for her children uh, to um, learn from and then model themselves. And so that's kind of where we're going tonight in, in this lesson. I thought it's, as today is a day where uh, we obviously worship God, but also a day where we are honoring our mothers and thanking them for all that they do, I thought maybe we could continue thinking a little bit about godly mothers and the strength of the faith of a godly mother. It's been said uh, that the head of the home is the father, but the heart of the home is the mother. And I don't think that takes away from either role in the home. I think it just shows how uh, there is kind of different relationships between a father and his children and a mother and her children. And, and they're not any less significant than the other. Uh, but there is something special about a mother, and especially the heart of a mother. And as we kind of look at some scriptures now that look at a family training their children and teaching their children, Deuteronomy 6, let's look at verse 6. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. When you look at a passage like this, the responsibility for the training of your children in the faith and in the knowledge of Scripture and who God is and who Jesus is, that responsibility is mainly on the shoulders of parents. It's not just on the shoulders of their Sunday school teacher or the preacher or the elders of the congregation that you attend. Or if you have teenagers, it's not on the shoulders of your youth minister. While the youth minister does have a responsibility to help your children grow in their faith, while the preacher has a responsibility to the whole congregation to help everybody, including children, uh, grow in their faith, while um, education ministers are trying to put together the right curriculum that will help children grow in their faith, while Sunday school teachers are trying to do their very best uh, to help your children grow in their faith, the, the main people that will help their children grow in their faith are their parents. And so as we look tonight, I want you to realize the, the it's not a burden, but the responsibility that's put on the shoulders of parents to make sure they are teaching diligently the gospel to their children and that they are showing their children who God is in scripture and who Jesus is in scripture, that they are teaching them and helping them grow and learn Yes, the youth minister is great for teenagers, but the youth minister is meant to be an aid for the teenagers, not the primary source for the teenagers of faith. And the same is true for uh, any other ministers, any elders, uh, any Sunday school teachers. The primary source should be parents getting their children into the Word. And a godly mother has a strong faith herself and will thus take her children deeply into the Word of God as they mature 
She knows where to go when they're younger and when they don't go deep into Scripture. But as they grow and can handle more, the mother knows that and will help them grow in their faith and not just stay kind of stagnant without growing. Let's look uh, at a mother's faith this evening. And I want to talk about a few things that a mother's faith is because I want to talk about what is necessary for a mother, uh, for godly mothers to transfer their faith to the next generation, to their children. Let's look at the types of uh, qualities that are present in a mother's faith. And the first thing I want to talk about is over in 2 Timothy. So if you'll go ahead and turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1. A mother's faith is genuine or sincere. And as you get to 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, we'll read verse number uh, 3 beginning. I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. And here's our, here's our point in verse 5. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am also persuaded, or and I am persuaded is in you also. When Paul is talking to Timothy here, he mentions this genuine faith that Timothy has. Something that's genuine is something that's not fake. It's real. It's it's sincere. It's true. It's authentic. And Paul is talking about this real and authentic and sincere, genuine faith that is in Timothy. And he says, you don't have it because of things you've done, but you have this faith because, number one, you had a godly grandmother in Lois. And as you continue in your grandmother Lois, and then your grandmother Lois, who was so godly and had a genuine faith, taught your mother Eunice. And so that faith was transferred from, it, it was not Lois's, or uh, it was not Lois's faith that Eunice had, but it was because of Lois's faith that Eunice grew in her faith. And then Eunice, growing in her faith and then having a child of her own, having Timothy, helps Timothy grow and mature in his faith. It's not that you take on the faith of your parents and you have it just because your parents have that faith, but it is that because of the strength of the faith of your parents, they train you and they teach you what faith is. They show you the scriptures and train you in the scriptures and your faith grows and strengthens. I hope that you don't just have a faith only because it's what you were taught growing up, but rather I hope that you have a faith that is sincere and real and genuine and is yours, and it came from a place of having parents that had a real genuine faith that taught you and trained you and helped you grow in your faith. A mother's faith is genuine and is sincere. Sincere faith is not an act, but it's completely genuine, unhypocritical, and it's without pretense or deceit. If a mother is not real in her faith, if she's fake, if she's hypocritical, how can she expect her children to have any real faith of their own or to do the right things for the right reasons as they grow and mature? How does one's faith become real and genuine? A godly mother will grow in her faith because she spends a lot of time in prayer, praying for her family, praying for her own faith and her own soul, uh, just constant communication with God. That's how you start growing into a genuine, real faith. But it doesn't just end with prayer and begin with prayer, but rather it continues and you have studying, as we've been talking about so much recently. A godly mother grows in her faith and has a real faith because it's a faith that's not just communicating to God in prayer, but it's a faith that is allowing God to communicate to her through studying the scriptures, through meditating on the words of God. And then a godly mother's faith is genuine, not just from prayer and study, but as she's gone through her own trials and experiences herself. As she goes through those, her faith is strengthened, as the book of James tells us in chapter 1 and verse number 2. As we are tested and tried, our faith increases. And as our faith increases, we become more capable hopefully, of training our children to grow in their faith as well. So a godly mother's faith is genuine, 
It's real. It's not fake. It's not hypocritical. And it gets to that point because she spends a lot of time talking to God in prayer. She spends a lot of time listening to God through studying Scripture. She spends a lot of time trusting God through the trials that she goes through. And as a result, she has a faith that grows and strengthens and is real. It's not fake. It's not a show. It's true. It's genuine. It's sincere. Faith is shown as genuine when it's accompanied by actions. As we've talked about in the last few weeks looking at James 2 and you know, faith and works going together to prove our faith by the things that we do, not just what we say, but connecting the two together by doing things that connect with what we are professing with our mouths and when we talk about our faith in Jesus. Yes, it's great to profess that verbally, but make sure your actions live up to that. A real, authentic, genuine faith is a faith that does whatever it's saying. That, li- that lives out whatever it's professing. And a mother, who is, a godly mother whose faith is genuine and sincere is a godly mother who does things based upon the confession of her faith in Jesus as the Son of God. It's a mother who spends time in prayer and in study and in trusting God through trials and tribulations. A mother's faith first is genuine and sincere. But not just that, a mother's faith is modeled. As you have a faith that is genuine and sincere, then you get to a point where you have a faith worthy of being modeled. You don't want your children to follow in your footsteps if your footsteps aren't following in those of Jesus. And so you want to have a faith worthy of being modeled after. And if you're working on having this genuine, sincere faith, then it's a faith that's worthy to be modeled by your children. And so uh, looking over in 2 Timothy chapter 3 now, 2 Timothy 3 And um, looking at verse 14, But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. So continue in the things you've learned and been assured of, knowing who you've learned them from. Model the things that you've learned. Model the things that you know you need to be doing, that you've witnessed with your own eyes. Model that faith. The faith you saw in your grandmother, the faith that you saw in your mother Eunice, model that faith. Modeled faith is a faith that can be followed. And um, like we were saying, you want to make sure that if your children do follow in your footsteps, they are footsteps you would want your children to follow in. Not that you, uh, not a faith that you hope your children, or a life that you hope your children don't follow in, but rather one that you desire them to, not out of false pride and arrogance, but rather because you know that you are committed to Jesus and you pray and hope that your children will follow in those footsteps of trusting and committing their lives to Jesus. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 1, Paul says, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. That is not a statement of arrogance or pride, but it is a confident statement in someone who is doing everything that he can to follow Jesus. And if people struggle with trying to understand how to fully imitate Jesus, Paul's saying, imitate what I'm doing because my desire is to imitate Christ. So if you imitate what I'm doing, you in in turn are really not imitating me, but you're really imitating Jesus. And children that imitate their mothers uh, in their walk with God, if their mother's faith is genuine and sincere, then their children If they are modeling after that faith, they will imitate their mothers as their mothers are imitating Jesus. It's not about your children uh, just doing what you do because you're their mother, but it's about your children doing what you're doing because what you're doing is following Jesus. And a mother's faith is genuine and sincere, number one, but it's also a faith that should be modeled by her children and a faith that a mother would want her children to model. The transfer of convictions requires convictions, first of all, to even transfer. And so, mother's faith is genuine and sincere, number one. A mother's faith is modeled, number two. And then number three, a mother's faith is assuring. If you look back at verse 14, it says, You must continue in the things that you've learned and been assured of, knowing from whom whom you have learned them. So, This word assurance, just as a mother uh, is assured of her father in heaven with the words uh, found in the pages of his word, in the pages of the Bible, she then assures her children 
as she's raising them of those same blessings and promises, as she's teaching them and as she's helping them through the difficulties that they navigate as they grow up and mature, she's constantly pointing them back to their father that they can trust and reminding them and assuring them of the blessings that are in Jesus, of the promises that God has made to be with us, to help us, to protect us. And so a godly mother's faith is one that is genuine and sincere. It's, it's authentic. It's real. It's not hypocritical. It's not fake. And it comes from a place of study and, and prayer and trust in God through trials. And it's a faith that's worthy of being modeled. And not just that, but a mother's faith is a faith that assures her children, assures them of a God that loves them deeply, of a God that, that uh, will never leave or forsake them, of a Savior that died for them because of the great love He has for them, of a Savior that's constantly talking to God for them, of of this great um, this this great God above who created everything, yet wants to have a relationship with us uh, individually, specifically with His people, and that's a very beautiful and powerful thing. And so, a mother's faith assures her children through the times they face they face in their lives um, of the trust they should have in God, of His promises, His blessings. Uh, that he offers uh, to his children. So, mother's faith is genuine and sincere. A mother's faith is modeled when it is genuine and sincere. And a mother's faith is assuring uh, for her children, reminding them of God's promises and blessings. And number four, a mother's faith is consistent. A mother's faith is consistent. Look at verse 15. And that from childhood... You have known the script, the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So we see this word consistent here. You know the Holy Scriptures. They're able to make you wise for salvation uh, through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. We must keep all of God's Word, and our walk with God must be consistent with the pages of Scripture, with His uh commandments with his expectations, his desires for us. Our walk with him must be consistent with what scripture teaches. We cannot choose to obey the things that we like and ignore the things that are challenging. Uh, you think of of Jonah as one who, uh, being a prophet of God, runs from the mission of God because he doesn't like what the mission of God is. He doesn't like Nineveh. He doesn't want them to be saved. He doesn't want to go and help them get to a point where they could be saved. He doesn't want God to use him in that capacity because he wants these people destroyed. He can't stand them. And so you look at, at all these things that, that maybe Jonah has done before this point um, in the book of Jonah, and he gets to this point where God says something he doesn't agree with, he doesn't like, so he goes the other direction. We can't do that with our faith. A, a mother with a genuine, real faith that's worthy to be modeled, that assures her children of the promises and blessings of God, that same mother will have a faith that is consistent with te the teachings of God. Whatever God says do, that mother will do those things. Whatever Scripture warns us against that mother will be cautious in those areas and stay away from those things. A mother's faith is consistent with Scripture. James 2 and verse 10, For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of it all, uh, of all. So it's not meant to be that that's not meant to be a scary text for us to quote, but rather it's a reminder that we must keep the whole commandments of God all that He has commanded us to do, all the things that He wants us to do in the New Covenant, in the New Testament, uh, our covenant with God today, we must listen carefully and we must walk accordingly. And a godly mother has a faith that is consistent with the teachings of Scripture. When, when, a, excuse me, when a mother is following Jesus and has this kind of faith, then she doesn't question um, God's commandments and ignore what is in uh, convenient or what she might not like, but rather she follows it and she trusts God along the way. She's consistent with the teachings of Scripture. And then number five, a godly mother has a faith that is dedicated. And that kind of connects with the consistent part there. 
But he, if you go back uh, to verse 15, from childhood you've known the Holy Scriptures that you are able, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So childhood, from that point till now, you've known the Scriptures. You are consistent with the teachings of Scripture, and you are dedicated to those teachings. You are dedicated to God, to Jesus. The main way that our children will grow up to love and serve Jesus, serve the Lord, is to instill in them from an early age the importance of reading, uh, of studying, and memorizing and obeying God's Word. And not just memorizing to the point that you can quote it, but it's this idea of internalizing it, of, of keeping it inside, of, of having it there to pull from when you're tempted, when you're hurting, when you're struggling, which we all go through these points in life. And so a, a, a godly mother has a faith that's dedicated to God. Yes, that mother's faith is consistent with Scripture. It's also dedicated to uh, knowing that Scripture, dedicated to talking to God, dedicated to walking the right path, dedicated to helping others walk that path, to imitate that mother as she imitates Jesus. A mother's faith, uh, you might come up with many other things too, but just for us tonight, a mother's faith is genuine and sincere. A mother's faith that is genuine and sincere is a faith that is worthy to be modeled after by her children and by other people. And uh, that mother will do her very best to help her children model that faith. A mother's faith is not just genuine, sincere, and modeled, but a mother's faith is assuring when it comes to helping her children and, and uh, helping them grow in their faith and get through the different things that they experience in life. A mother's faith is assuring of God's blessings and God's promises. A mother's faith is consistent with Scripture and dedicated to walking the right path according to Scripture. Tonight, as, as we have another day come to a close, I hope that you've been able to really enjoy uh, this particular Lord's Day as, as we also honor mothers on this particular day each year. And I hope that um, those of you who have a mother who has a faith like this will hug her tight, will thank her for everything that she does, and will pray and thank God for blessing you with such a mother. I know that in my life, um, I was blessed with uh, wonderful family members. I have a, a wonderful father. Uh, but today, I want to thank my wonderful mother, uh, my wonderful grandmother, her mom, uh, who has passed, um, for helping me grow in my faith. Godly mothers and godly fathers, but godly mothers are dedicated to helping their children grow in their faith and mature in their faith and learn what faith even is. And so tonight we say thank you to all of the mothers out there who've committed their lives to following Jesus and are also committed to helping their children imitate them as they imitate Christ. Tonight, um, I want to remind you that if you have any need at all, uh, if you um, need to obey the gospel through baptism, if, if you're willing to repent of your sins and confess uh, Jesus as the Son of God and you need to be baptized to have those sins washed away. The number on the screen, you can call that number. You can send an email um, to one of the emails on the screen. We'll meet you at the building. Uh, we'll do our best to take care of the need that you have. And we'll make sure that if you're not a child of God, that you won't waste another second being outside of Christ, but rather we'll help you get into Christ so you can live a life that honors and glorifies His name and imitates Him each and every day. Tonight, maybe you just need prayers, and if you need us to pray for you, again, just let us know, and we can pray together if that's what you need. You can send us a prayer request, and we can just uh, pray for it, let the congregation know to pray for it in their prayer lives, or you can call us, and we'll pray together over the phone if that's what you need. But if you have any kind of need, if you looking tonight, I know the lesson was about a mother's faith, but really as you reflect on the, the qualities listed, it's any person's faith. Uh, real faith is the things that we've listed tonight. It's genuine and sincere. It's worthy to be modeled. It's assuring of God's promises and blessings. Um, and, and it's not just that, but it's consistent. It's dedicated uh, to following Scripture and to trusting in God. And so tonight, maybe you examine your faith and you realize it's not those things and you need prayers uh, to, to be forgiven of that. We'll pray together if that's what we need. But if, you, if we can do anything for you, please let us know. 
Uh, we thank you as always for tuning in to these lessons. We hope that you are able to take something from the Word of God that will that will encourage you, uh, that will uh, edify you and help you to be a light uh, wherever it is that you may live and serve. And uh, we pray that you continue to stay healthy and safe through these times. And hopefully things can go back to some kind of normal, whatever that looks like, uh, as soon as possible. But as always, we say uh, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, take care and God bless.